Regina Sanchez here, your spiritual life and health coach. Welcome to my podcast, giving you a fresh start. My heart is to help you revive the joy in your life, rejuvenate your God-given destiny, and restore your body to health. Grab a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, or a glass of spring water with a splash of lemon and sit back. Take notes if you can, and enjoy the teaching I'm about to embark on. Let's get started giving you a fresh start. Good morning, friends. Regina Sanchez, your spiritual life and health coach, believing in you. Welcome this day to my podcast, Giving You a Fresh Start After Divorce. Thanks for joining me, and I'm so glad that you're here as we continue on this very difficult journey. And today, I want to talk to you about how to not walk in fear during your divorce. So pause this if you want, grab your favorite beverage, come back and let me inspire you and encourage you and give you the tools to get you through. So I have a question, who's walking before you? And I'm going to follow up that question with a scripture. And it's from Deuteronomy 38, uh, verse 31, chapter 31, verse 8. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord will personally go ahead of you. He will be with you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. Wow, that's such a powerful scripture. Let me read it again. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord will personally go ahead of you. He will be with you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. And again, that's Deuteronomy 31 verse 8. You know, when I was going through my divorce and I'd be walking into the courthouse, it was utterly frightening for me, especially the very first day. I didn't know what to expect and fear was welling up inside of me. And I I'd have all these thoughts like, was God's power stronger than the enemies? You know, this was a question I would battle. I battled that question for, for a number of years because of the traumas that I experienced. But what didn't help my fear of the situation was also the intensity of the courthouse. It was a very old building. It was quite beautiful. Massive ceilings. I mean, 30 foot ceilings. I don't, you know, it was massive and it had wood paneling that was very intense, dark, intimidating, and powerful. And the room gave you the feeling that it was a place where power was released and not always in a judicial way. And actually that the room could swallow you up. That's what it felt like. Well, one of the things the Lord blessed me with was a kind lawyer expensive, but kind, because the Lord knew I needed his kindness to get me through this very tumultuous time. Because as I sat in the courtroom, I would observe other individuals and their lawyers. So as you proceeded to the front of the courtroom, there was this railing with a gate, and it spoke of itself saying, no one beyond this point except authority figures. So that meant only the courthouse employees and attorneys could go beyond that point. And you could too, unless you were invited. You you couldn't unless you were invited. The attorneys had seats right on the other side of the railing as they were allowed to sit there until their case was called. And just about every seat was filled with an attorney. So that meant their clients were sitting behind the railing. My lawyer chose to sit with me behind the railings and it was comforting for me because I didn't feel alone in this massive room as I witness others sitting by themselves. And he did that actually through all the few years that we were in court. He never, never went up and sat with the other lawyers. He sat right next to me. But what was even more comforting for me was to know that my Lord and my God had personally gone ahead of me. He prepared the day and he prepared the way. 
He also told me that he would never fail me nor abandon me. And that was better than any human support that I could ask for. Can you, my sister, can you take hold of this promise and know that the Lord your God is telling you not to be afraid? Does that mean that you won't feel that fear? Perhaps you will. But what I do believe that is even in spite of that feeling of fear you will have, that you still can have the strength and courage to proceed because he has gone before you. He has prepared the way and the day, and he will be right alongside you, holding your hand and keeping you close. And and if you can find a visual of his presence, all the better. And not only remember that he is with you, but he sent his angels to protect you. And that was something I could visualize. You know, as I would park my car um, and begin to approach the courthouse many, many times, probably every time, I would thank the Lord for his warring angels that he sent before me. And I believed that they were massive angels that stood. And I visually would see this as I was walking. I would imagine this in my mind, whatever you want to say, but I would see it. And I would... I would see these angels standing shoulder to shoulder, sword to sword, and they towered over the courthouse. You know, when we think of angels, a lot of times we think about those cute, chubby little things that, you know, Hallmark sends. They have wings and they're holding their Cupid arrows. No, 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 no. God's angels are massive. They're bigger than life. So keep in your mind that the Lord and his angels are before you and they're with you and that all your fears will dissipate. And don't forget that if that fear is lingering, then perhaps it's a spirit that I've talked about many times trying to infiltrate your life. It's that spirit of fear that God has not given you. Now, I also want you to remember that you will never rise above your confessions. What are you confessing daily? Are you confessing fear and lack and difficulties and problems or troublesome circumstances? Do you know that those confessions can create your situation to worsen? Proverbs 18.21 says this beautifully. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. What is your tongue saying? You know, and the Lord also said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. We must take our stand based on what the word of God says and not what the circumstances around us say. How did God create the universe? Did he wave a magic wand or mold it in his hands? No. He created it by speaking it into being. Let there be light, and there was light. I think this is what I firmly believe and stand on. He was giving us a model to follow for our lives. Now, listen, I'm not saying, you know, name it and claim it, and it'll happen magically. No. What I am saying is faith believes what God says. We have to stop responding with our feelings and emotions and looking at the circumstances around us. And I know it's not easy. But we need to make the decision that we will listen, believe, and follow only the Word of God. We can't necessarily, you know, necessarily change ourselves. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. But we need to make the decision to follow his word and let the Holy Spirit change us. Kind of give the Holy Spirit permission. He won't go against your will. But we must understand how powerful our words are. So what will you begin to confess? Will you change what comes out of your mouth? Will you begin to confess what the word says? Gosh, I pray so. Here's a little confession statement I'm giving you that you could speak and adapt as your own. You know, if this 
if you feel like this doesn't apply to your life or the circumstances, then get in the word and find the promises to your situation. Then create a confession statement or a prayer, whatever you want to call it, that you can stand on. But speak it, speak it out daily, many times a day, until that truth is grounded in your heart. This isn't that name it, claim it. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is confess his promises so they can get rooted deeply in your heart. Confess them out loud because remember, faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. So this is a confession that I would would say. My father, my God is giving me everything I need. He is not leaving anything out, nothing, not one thing. Why? Because I am seeking his kingdom and I'm living righteously. How do I live righteously? By the blood of the lamb and what Jesus did for me. I am studying God's word continually. I will not stop studying God's word. I love God's word. I believe God's word. I apply God's word to my life. No one can interfere with God's word in my life. The only way is if I let them and I will not let them. I will obey his word always. Not only will I study it, but I'll obey it. And I'll keep it in my mind and in my heart all day and all night. I will obey it. And because I made the choice to do this, I will be successful in all I do. Why? Because his word works. It's truth. It's life. It's powerful, powerful, powerful. That is a confession statement that I would say. Adapt it to your own. Rewrite it. But let your confession be one that empowers you to be more than a conqueror. So what are your kisses from your king? Well, I actually have a bunch today. And they're in the study guide. And the link is below. So you'll be able to get them. But let me read them to you. It said, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. And that's Matthew 6.33, excuse me. Next scripture is from Joshua 1.8. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so that you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all that you do. Job 36, 11, If you will listen and obey God, you will be blessed with prosperity throughout your life. All your years will be pleasant. And Job 22, verses 27 and 28 says, You will pray to him and he will hear you. And you will fulfill your vows to him. You will succeed in whatever you choose to do, and light will shine on the road ahead of you. And the last scripture is Exodus 23, verse 20 to 21. See, I am sending an angel before you to protect you on your journey and lead you safely to the place I have prepared for you. Pay close attention to him and obey his instructions. Do not rebel against him, for he is my representative, and he will not forgive your rebellion. Ooh, that's a big ouch right there. Don't rebel against him. God is sending that angel before you. So let me say this prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you and I petition you to fulfill in my sisters the promises of your word that is in the scriptures above. Let them know that you and your angels have gone gone before them and you have paved the path for them. And although the path may be rough and rocky, let them feel your presence to know that you're with them, that you're protecting them, and that no weapon formed against them will prosper because victory belongs to the Lord and his children. I thank you, Lord, and I praise your holy name, knowing that my sisters can be at peace at least for this moment of time. And I am believing in your freedom and deliverance as a woman redeemed. And I hope this message blesses you and gives you strength and courage to keep moving forward because bottom line, you need to. 
don't give up. When you feel beaten down, seek the Lord. When you need a person beside you, then seek family and friends who are supportive. But be careful who you let come alongside you. You know, very early on, well, somewhat early on, I, um, my sister, bless her heart, um, came to court with me. You know, and there comes a time in, in a divorce situation that your lawyer has made the decision at what point they want to start bailing, <laughs> literally, that they, they've had enough, they've reached financial maximum of what they feel they can get out of you, and they want to start bailing. They want to start ending the situation, even if you are not in the best place or you have not gotten what you want. And that's what happened to me. And so my lawyer wanted me to negotiate something with my spouse that was so ridiculous because he wanted it to be done with. He wanted it, he wanted to move on from the from my situation. And sadly, my sister went alongside him. So now I'm in court and I'm battling, you know, outside the courtroom, I'm battling my lawyer saying, no, no, you're crazy thinking my ex is going to agree to it. Or even if he agreed to it, he's lying. And, and I'm battling my lawyer and my sister. And it was tough. And it was at that moment on, I didn't allow her to come to court with me anymore. And that I knew that I needed to stand with the Lord in my situation and hear his voice and not what my attorney might be suggesting. So if you need someone to encourage you, be careful who who you um, you need or who you ask to come alongside you. Because you need someone to encourage you, support you, love you, and give you truth. Now... I also have a book that can help bring you closer to the Heavenly Father. It's my journey of knowing Him in a much greater way from my real life experiences, mistakes and all. And of course, as a spiritual life coach, I'm here to coach you through this difficult time of life and to help keep you on track. I'm just a click away. And below, you'll find the link to this study guide. So go spend time with the Father. And below also, you will find the link to, to have that chat with me. So I'm wrapping up this little segment of our enemy, our biggest enemy in this little series of um, giving you a fresh start after divorce. And our biggest enemy, remember, is fear. Well, my next podcast is going to be on who represents you. Now, next week, I am taking the week off. Um, I'm partially on vacation, and I partially took on uh, helping uh, an organizing job with a client. So I'm not going to do a podcast next week. But the following week, I am going to start teaching on who represents you. And it may surprise you, I'm not talking about your lawyer. So be blessed, friends. Be encouraged. Thank you so much for listening. I hope that you you find strength, courage, love, and you can move into a sense of peace from my messages. I know the journey's hard. I know it can be long. I am here for you. I'm just a click away. God bless. Thanks for listening. Well, thank you, my friends, for taking the time to listen to my podcast. I hope you found it uplifting and encouraging and that it guides you to having peace, joy, love, and health in your life. If you would like more information on the services I offer, go to my website, reginasanchez.com. Or if you're ready to dive into my teachings, head on over to givingyouafreshstart.com. This is where I will teach you how to start fresh on different aspects of your life. You can also find my book, Can I Have Your Heart, Daddy, on Amazon. Be blessed, be encouraged, and know that you are loved.